Hi, Thomas. Hello, Loïc. So we're here with Thomas Crampton, who is uh, going to explain us how the Irish journal is made. And not the, the reason to be a reporter is it's just the funnest job in the world. It's the best job in the world. Your job is to go out to interesting places, to meet interesting people, and to write about it, and you get paid. And they pay your expenses, too. <laughs> Okay, well, so tell me where it starts. So somebody sends you a press release. Yes, exactly. That's all, all, all good journalism starts with a press release. <laughs> That's how no. it starts, right? No? <laughs> Never. No. You know, it, it, one of the things a newspaper, a journalist has to do, is think about both things. What do people need to know to be good citizens, and what do they want to know about, because it's what they enjoy or because it's what they're interested in. And frankly, a good newspaper does both. I mean, a good newspaper can give you great coverage of the World Cup, as I think we did, using some of our best people, including Roger Cohen and, and uh, a lot of our sports writers, Peter Berlin and Rob Hughes. Uh, but we also covered the Lebanon War, and we gave you both. And you don't have to read both if you don't want. You can only read one or the other. But I don't think you really understand the world unless you understand. Frankly, in that case, I think you needed to understand both. If you didn't understand what Zidane did at the end of the World Cup, yeah. you were out of the conversation in the world that day. Um, but if you didn't understand what was happening in South Lebanon, you also were a little out of the conversation in the world. So do you think it's a threat? Do you think we'll, we'll still have all this uh, paper out there uh, in about 10, 15 years? It's been there for uh, two centuries. For a long centuries. time. Well, it's a threat as a business problem. It's, it's not a problem about whether people care about the journalism, because I think people like to read um, carefully thought through analysis. Sometimes they like it in a blog form. Sometimes they like it more in a newspaper journalism form. I don't think that's going to go away. And so do you check the online version the day after to see actually what are the articles that had the highest audience and do you match those with uh, your own choices to compare? It's a very interesting concept, and I have never done that before. You see what I mean? It's like, like comparing or the most... Do you have the most emailed we articles? We do. I, I look at the most emailed list a lot, but I think it's a completely different audi audience and a completely different way of actually ranking articles. I mean, I'm addicted to our most emailed articles, <laughs> and the New York Times is also, but it doesn't at all reflect what I consider in news judgment the most interesting. Oh, really? Very important stories, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Very often wait, wait, the most what's the difference, say? Yeah. Uh, a lot of times they're a little bit, um, they're, you know, socially interesting, more ludique, as the French would oh, say. Something you more talk so about in a dinner? Yeah, but more but not so that you would put at the front of a Herald Tribune. I don't know. I mean, and, you know, how often do you go to a dinner and have a real in-depth conversation about the next mini-constitution of the EU? You know, I mean, it can happen, but it's not necessarily the... It's, it's important for our readers, but I don't know that it's necessarily the thing that people talk about the most in a dinner. What, how do you feel about those sites that, uh, like dig like, or blogs, um, uh, search? I mean, let let people decide what is important mm -hmm. for them uh, by themselves. Like they are creating a journal. I, I think it's I think it's great. I mean, they're different. You know, we we don't have to pretend that everything's the same. Um, what a journalist does as he or she is doing her work is bring to bear her own knowledge and expertise. What some of these sites do is bring together the sort of the, the knowledge of a community, um, and I think they both have a wonderful place, and I think they can coexist. I don't I don't think they're they're mutually exclusive. So and I so think so I what's think, the difference? I mean, well, I think there is a difference between the the sort of authorship of an individual, an individual person's judgments and 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 um, um, understandings and conceptions. Your blog is really your judgments and yep. concepts. You bring together a lot of other things into it, but it's still your personal judgment. I think that's that's traditional authorship. This new thing, which is the kind of wisdom of the crowd, is another way of understanding the world. And I actually think it's great to have both. I think they add to each other. And frankly, a lot of times, what the crowd is bringing to bear is its reading of the authorship. And a lot of what the crowd is reading, they read your blog, they read Katrine Benhold on Sarkozy, they put it all together, and then they make some judgments, and that pushes you up or down on the listings of um, the ratings. But do you see amateur content as a, a big trend, as a threat? Or do you see it just as... Uh, I don't think it is a threat. I think it's... I don't know, even know if you could call it a trend. I mean, for a while, we had this. We had a deal with a Korean uh, company called Oh My News, oh My News which yeah. is a amateur you know, journalist content. And I don't think it was a very popular thing on our site, actually. But that could be just because it's very Korean and it's very local, you know, sort of stuff. But, um, 
No, I think there'll always be room for professional journalists and professional editors. Uh, at least I hope so. Earth? Harold Tribune has been here in Paris for 120 years. Wow. James Gordon Bennett, a uh, New York publisher, decided that he should have a Paris edition of his newspaper, the New York Herald. Uh, so he started one. And it's been here ever since. It's merged and changed and transmogrified, but it's always been a Paris-based newspaper. And I think it shows. The paper's more international and more cosmopolitan and more Don't worldly. Don't you feel like an American island here? It's amazing. I feel uh, like I'm not in Paris. You yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, well, you're in Neuilly, first of all. You're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> right. you're in Sarkozy's hometown. <laughs> so, Sarkozy's town, yes. So uh, you're not quite in Paris. But, yeah, it's very, it's very uh, more American. Although one thing that's interesting is that in the whole company, the business and news side together, um, there are quite a number of different nationalities across the whole company. Uh, the advertising department is much more French, actually, than the newsroom, um, interestingly. And we also have a lot of... Brits and Australians, and of course our political, our French political reporter is German, and our German political reporter is Irish. So, this is the library. Uh, what's funny about the library is how empty it is now. When I started the Herald Tribune, the library was a huge zone filled with lots and lots of books, and we have this thing in the basement. We still have it, and newspapers have this called the morgue. The morgue is where you would keep the filings of what had happened in the past. And if anything happened, you'd call the morgue, and they'd go down and they'd search through these old filing papers of clippings. Every day, the clippings were taken from the newspaper. Uh, and that job of the library has completely evaporated. It's called Google now. It's called Google. Well, <laughs> we don't actually use Google. For, we use Google sometimes, but we have an internal library system. Uh, and we have LexisNexis, uh, as well as Factiva, all of these uh, electronic databases, which are often much better than Google, because Google brings back too much information. One thing that shocked me when I went to sit down and work as an editor is the, the wireless. So I'm very much used to the Google News generation, uh, the user-generated things that are ranked according to importance. And this is what the editors here at the paper see, is a list of everything like that. This is all the news that has... And it's all from Reuters. It. Uh, no, it's not all from Reuters. It's all from many, many services. Um, this just happens to be the Reuters. But my point is that it's a whole list. And this might be that Iran is about to launch a nuclear war, whereas this is just about some bond interest rate thing that is not interesting at all. So as an editor, you're presented with identical looking news that's not ranked at all according to what its importance might be. So as a user of Google News, already you're one step up on the editing process of an editor with a, with a system that, that doesn't rank the news. This is flat, you mean? Yeah, this the other one is there is no context. And th this has, this has no you don't context. know if there is viral activity or not around it, like if people talk about it. We have no idea whether it's but important or not. This is all raw news copy. This is the news copy that eventually ends up on Google News, but it starts here. Uh, just in a simple list and you can't tell whether it's a story about a nuclear war that's about to begin or a story about something that is uh, not important at all. They all look, they all have the same level of importance. I don't know how many cities were printed in. Uh, this edition which is made and printed in, in Paris is sold in eight or nine countries but we're printed in, in, in print sites around the world, in cities around the world um, it is the largest uh, general interest newspaper in the world, and this is this is where we put the newspaper together. Who owns it? Uh, it's owned by the New York Times. And so, do you share anything with them? We share a lot with them. We we, we the New York Times became a full shareholder in uh, about three or four years ago, and ever since then, we've been trying to put together as much as possible the resources of the two publications. So what we do in the mornings is we start coordinating with the Hong Kong newsroom. Here in Paris at around 10.30 a.m. we have a conference call between Paris and Hong Kong to talk about what's the important news of the day. And then a few minutes ago you just uh, witnessed the 4.30 news meeting, uh, 4 o'clock actually now, news meeting, which is, is where we decide what's going to go on the page one for the newspaper for this region. And then we coordinate with the New York Times newsroom here in, in Manhattan in okay. New York. Over here we have the conference room, which is where we decide the... Uh, what goes on to page one. This is the meeting room where in the mornings uh, we have uh, a conference with the Hong Kong Bureau of the editorial room of the newspaper uh, over this conference phone. Uh, and uh, there we discuss what they've put onto page one, why they put it onto page one, and figure out uh, what we should put onto page one. In the evenings that conference takes place with New York uh, and we, ha we, listen, we, we sit in on the New York Times uh, morning meeting hearing what they put on 
to their page one and we adjust accordingly. If, they can, if we're very interested in a story, we'll ask the New York Times to get it sooner to us. Uh, if they're inter- interested in one of our stories and they'll say, but we want this angle on it, we'll add that to our story. So it's sort of a cooperative dovetailing of the two newsrooms. This quickly, I'll show you this quickly. This is the organization of the newspaper how it's put together. These are all the different sections of the newspaper. And when we have the, the meeting, uh, which you sat in on earlier, each of the editors, the Euro editor, the America's editor, the finance editor, the sports editor, they will all take up these skeds, which they've been preparing all day, and they'll sit around this table and defend them and say, this is a story we think should go on page one, this is a story that we should uh, uh, really push hard because it's a really good one, and the other will say, no, my story's a little bit better, and you fight to get there. they're all fighting to get their stories onto page one. On to the Nicer Hotel. Um, this is also the, the, um, where the, the Chinese the embassy is located. Your, your <laughs> yeah, so you try to get around. So you took me into your uh, 440 meeting? Mm-hmm. How do you call it? The, the, four. Four. the news meeting. The, the news meeting, meeting, right? Where do you, you decide? What's going to be on on the on t- tomorrow's right. our Tribune, right? right? How do you decide? Because you, you seem to be very like uh, alone to do the, to make the decision, no? I'll verify that, but I, but I went over and down. And it's, it's pretty clear. It's like there's a campaign as Oh, I don't really do it alone. I try to listen to what everybody's saying about it because it's really the wisdom of groups, right? That you have right. a whole group of people and you get everybody's ideas, and and of course that meeting ends with us listing some stories, but we'll, be, we'll spend the next two hours walking around this office, the different editors, talking about these stories, and we may come up with a whole new set of stories by the end of the night. Um, and then over here on the side, we have, this is the editorial pages uh, behind this glass wall. If you look in here, you can see. Uh, and we have a very strict division between the editorial pages and the news pages of the paper to the point where the editorial section of the newspaper, which is the opinion pages, they don't even come to the news meetings. The news meetings are uh, uh, entirely separate. The idea being that we don't want to have any influence either way. You know, they have they can write the opinion stuff however they want, but we're going to write what is fact-based and what is news totally separately. Hmm. Uh, and if we come over, so here here there's a bunch of. Can you give me an example of that, where you have like uh, facts on the one side and an opinion on the other one? Oh, very easy. An election is a perfect one. Uh, we will be writing about what the candidate is saying and what the candidate's platform is. And on the other side, you'll have people saying that France needs to have Sarkozy or France needs to have Ségolène Royal. But the opinion page, but the, the, the opinion, the, these opinions are entirely separate from the uh, uh, what's written in the news pages of the newspaper. What happens in Europe is there tends to be much more of a mixing of the uh, points of views of the. But are you sure the journalists papers? are not putting their uh, views and opinion a little bit in the articles? Uh, obviously, it's, it's an ideal that you're striving for. You can't. You can't attain that ideal all the time, but you fight. We fight very, very hard, uh, harder than most, I'd say, to, to try and maintain reaching towards that ideal. So when is the final decision? About 8 o'clock at night, we have to make a final decision for the first of our two European editions, and then about 10.30 at night, we have a final European edition, which is the one you would get here in Paris. So if you, if you have... Uh Something huge happening at nine. Yes. What happens? You we, can't. We change the front page. In y- fact, really, you change one, everything. One thing we do very often is for big World Cup games, big football games, we often change the front page. And so you have um, two uh, two front pages. Two front pages. Maybe, maybe here. Let's go take a look. Hold on a second. We didn't we didn't particularly have it today, but let's see if we can find one from from, from some you know time before. Okay, that's it, isn't it? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Okay. Easy. So. First European edition of the paper of Thursday, May 24th. Okay. You did the first edition because it has the four stars there. Four stars. This okay. is the paper we did at 9 o'clock at night. While we were printing this paper, the presses were running. and this AC is Milan was playing Liverpool. The presses were running. The game was going. And this so this is four stars. Five stars. This is five, five stars. stars. Okay. Five stars. And so as you can see... We changed the front page. Change of a picture, yeah. To give you the most important story, the outcome of the football match. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it for a lot of kind, a lot of different kinds of news. But we try to give people up to date news. The That's editors right. are the people who take the copy that the reporters have written 
and their job is to make us look good, to make us uh, look more intelligent. So they correct your be. mistakes. They correct our mistakes. They add context. So, for example, if we write something, that they'll say, "Why is this important? What's 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 uh, new about this information? Why should we care that the the European so they make Union you look has done smart. something?" No, yeah. that you're not. Generally, they, generally they, that's their job. It's, it's sometimes a okay. tough job, but they do it. So, so, so let's say let's editors. say the story begins in the field. I am in uh, Burma. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I'm traveling through there to do a feature story. Some news happens. I uh, witness something. I will call immediately to the Hong Kong office. The Hong Kong office. Uh, will we'll decide is that a story or not a story. If they say yes, that's a story, then I will go back and I'll start writing the story. While I'm writing the story, the whole system of the Herald Tribune will start coordinating it. So the people in Hong Kong will pr be prepared for the article to arrive. They'll be coordinating with the people in Paris. They'll be saying, is this a worthwhile story? What's good about this story? And as I'm running around concentrating on meeting people and actually writing the story, here they're, they're laying out the page and there have been times where I've literally not yet finished writing the story, um, but they're sort of holding the space on page one. They're calling me, where's your story, where's your story? Because when, when the system works like this, you can put the story straight onto the page. So how many reporters um, do you have? We have... Like, not in this building. Here in Paris, we have five reporters. I can't remember the exact number we have. In Brussels, we have two. In London, we have one. Uh, we have uh, two in Rome, one in Spain... Uh, we, we have a network around the world, which we also combine with the New York Times. So I think the, the, the combined... And so you take stories from f freelancers as well, or only... We take some stories from freelancers. Mainly we use our own stuff, mainly our own correspondence and those of the New York Times. Uh, that's okay. the, sort of the, the, the formula of how it works. But what's, what, one thing to stress about this, and the reason this whole thing works, and the reason that, 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 that newspapers are called the Daily Miracle... It was people in newspapers called them. When you see the newspaper office, you'll see it's a miracle that we come out every day, in part because we invent the entire product every single day. There are very few organizations that start with, you know, 28 blank sheets of paper and by the end of the day have something that people are willing to pay so it's two, a product. two euros 20 to get. Which it, is a product. Which is yeah. a product, which, every we're, which, single we're, day. which we're trying to get our readers to read. So let's take a look at the Show newsroom. Show me around. Let's take a look at the newsroom. So you can't so be as loud now. First, here we have the, uh, well, this is the photo desk here and here. This is the photo department. Here they will go through the wire services. We have, uh, I don't know how many wire services, six or seven wire services coming in with all of their photos, and you just get photos for every article. Um, and they, that, that's their, their job is sorting So do they out. order them? Sometimes. Do they request them, or do they come the, naturally? Sometimes the photos are requested. Uh, sometimes if there's a big news event, a big meeting of the EU, the photos will be sent through based on the meeting taking place or the event taking place. But if it's a feature story, often we'll have to order them. Here we have some photos. No, can we just look for one moment here? Mm -hmm. These are wire photos of sports events in the U.S., actually, baseball. Not, not of much interest to European readers. Um, but th th those are all automatically coming through from the wire services. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, over here, we have uh, the desks of, of uh, editors who are putting together the, the copy of the day. Um, what, where, it, where it really starts is over here. The, the, the regional editors are not sitting at their desks right now. The newspapers are sort of getting cranked up for the day. It starts late in the day uh, because we close the newspaper very late. We close the newspaper at 11 o'clock at night. So here you have the So people walk Europe until editor, midnight Asia. here? Yeah. Or 24 hours a day? Uh, 24 hours a day working on the newspaper, but not in this office. Okay. By the time we finish here, uh, New York is in full swing, and then by the time New York finishes, Hong Kong has already started again. So it's all three newsrooms working uh, basically a 24-hour news day. Okay. Um, this is a layout desk. Uh, Here's where they, 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 they actually do the, the put together the layout of the newspaper once the, it's up and running. Um, this is a planned sched for the day um, with, uh, you know, th th this is for the Asia edition, uh, deciding how it's all going to be divided up on the broadest basis. These are advertisements, that's text, advertisement text. Mm. And then the person sitting at this desk will decide in, co in, in co uh, organization with other people uh, which news is important, how much space will each story get. 
Oh, oh here we are. Oh, no, 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 show no, it. What is no, it? No, it's too messy, please. No, no, no. That's, that's, the that's how so you're doing it, right? <laughs> so this is Anne Sophie. Anne Sophie, this is Louis. This is, so this is the newspaper. This is the no, newspaper in the making. Don't show how messy <laughs> <laughs> This is version one. There will be eight more. There are eight more versions eight like more. that. And so when do you, so you do this every day, like every afternoon? Um, yes, I'm often in finance. I'm not always in You have to put yet. your mic yeah. in here. Yeah. Uh, Can you hold it? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, just, yeah, yeah, no, sometimes I work in the news pages, sometimes on finance, and so based on the schedule that we just saw and based on how much space we have, yeah. um, we try to book the paper and organize things and make sure everything fits and is as pretty as can be for our readers. So, and, uh, and so you have a big responsibility. How do you decide? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, well, it's supposed to include news judgment. It's it depends on art, it depends on um, what time we're actually going to receive certain articles because we try to close pages um, not all at once. Mm -hmm. um, so if we know we're getting a lot of late stories, we'll try to put the late stories on the same pages, but more than anything we try to group stories on the same subjects together. This is where the, the web coordination here... Um, oh, this is the web people? This is, this is web. We'll introduce you to, to Jim. Jim? Hello. Louis. Hi, Jim. Are we live? We're live. <laughs> we're live. We're broadcasting. We're streaming. Wow. Uh, so, Jim, how is how's, uh, the online version compared to the print version? Um, it's usually updated a lot more often. Uh, there's like, a like, of like, like how often? Every well, when we were putting, we're constantly putting new stories on the web. The 24 hours a day. Um, it slows down after about one in the morning Paris time. New York picks it up. Or the New York Times picks it up for us, but they don't devote a full shift to it, so it slows down a little bit overnight Paris time, and then in, the, in early morning Paris time, Hong Kong picks it up and m it makes some major updates. So tell me, is it still like a second product, something nobody pays too much <laughs> attention of? Like no. It's not very important. No, I think the fact that I'm sitting here is proof that... <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean sitting here? Well, that they, I mean, recently this job was created to make, to put an editor actually in charge of updating the, the European edition onto the web and, and we have a lot more people working on the web now than there were even six months ago and um, so yeah Do you think the web is going to take over the paper soon? <laughs> well if you look at the figures you would say now and not soon Is it growing? It's growing very fast but it still represents a very small Like, like what? Portion. Less than 10% oh, really? of the revenue but it's Of growing. the revenue but yeah, how about the audience? The audience is growing at well, at, at high double-digit rates. Can you tell how much, or is it? I can't. I don't want to say anything off the top of my head, but it's it's going very well. Month, year on year, it's the the audience is nearly double. So, how do you do your own? You do your own front page. Is it the same? It's not the same as the print, right? You change all the time. We change all the time. We move stuff around. We change photos a lot. But the, if you look at the, you know, the plan for what, what's going to be on page one, it's going to be similar on the web, obviously. Yeah, so we've just done this meeting. We've just done this meeting, you know, and for Asia, if you look at what was on page one, it's very similar to what's on the web, but we have more room for stories on the web. Um, yeah, you have no space limitations, do yeah, you? Yeah, we have, well, we have, on the actual home page, there are space limitations, but... So there is, a, there is an important selection there process you have to have on the, fr on the f home page to choose which... Yeah, but it's based, it's, you know, it's based on what we decide in the meetings. It's, and I might add some things to the home page that are more web-friendly, like more, more articles on technology maybe, or more articles on media. So how do you integrate your users, the interactivity with the Herald Tribune, what you cannot do on paper, right? Do we, you have, have, uh, we have a lot of discussions. We allow yeah. people to write in. Um, is that moderated? It's moderated for sure, yeah. Uh, beforehand or afterhand? We, we, we only post things that have been seen by, by an actual person. Oh, so you have people... Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, and so these people are sitting here? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> right there. Right, that is one of our web, web producers, and uh, the, pr the main producer on duty will look at the discussions and, uh, and, and moderate them. So if it's like a very heated discussion, I don't know, an election going on, mm -hmm. like in France recently, or, or uh, something very, very hot, and you have like... Oh, I don't know, readers disagreeing with the journalist. Yeah. I'm sure it happens, right? Sure, we can, we po we'll post those. As long You'll as post them. As, as long as there's no uh, profanity or racism or homophobic... Even if they criticize the journal over journalists? Sure, we If they say, Thomas, what you wrote is wrong... <laughs> <laughs> well, especially with him. <laughs> up there, you know. um, no, no, we, we allow people to be critical of the writers and the, and the, and the reports. Um, we just don't allow any... 
vulgarities or right. like I said or racism or do you allow hate, hate, the people to mail, like tell that. you what's important in the news like uh, uh, rate I mean do another front page like do you have a n most email we have most email uh, or do you have like a dig like some people we don't have it. we're gonna have that with the redesign a mo we're gonna have what we're gonna call a most popular which will allow mm -hmm. people to vote on things most email is not that effective um, because if I think the vast majority of people who email stories still cut and paste. Yeah, right. They so you don't, don't know, right? So we don't, you know, if the figures are not the figures of most email are only the people who bother to click e email this and type in all the information. Right. Whereas you know, most people just they just cut and paste into an email. Um, so we are going to have a most popular function with the redesign wall, which will allow you just you know thumbs up, thumbs down sort of thing. And do you have uh, readers writing things, submitting stories too? Uh, we well, we that? have some readers who write very lengthy comments on certain oh. things, like uh, like the China discussion. Uh, let's see, where is it now? Hey, Matt, where is the China discussion now? Where can you link to it? Um, Skybox 2. In Sky 2? Okay, hang on. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, some of these comments for China were very long, you know, wow. almost like little mini articles. That's, that's as long as an article. Yeah, so like this, for example, this, this 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 comment is quite long. People are very passionate about the subject of democracy in China, as you can of see. Of course. Um, it depends. I mean, certain discussions really take off immediately and go for a long time, and other ones, you know, you can tell maybe but it wasn't... But so do you think some of them could have, like, could be journalists and write stories, too? How do you see it? I mean, would you... Um, some Why don't you have some guest writers like amateur? <laughs> it's, a, it's not a bad idea. I mean, it would it would take a lot of work for the editors. I think. If you, oh, right. you see, a lot of our readers are, are uh, English is not their first language, so it takes a little bit of work to make it into something that you would want to put outside of a discussion. But what else? Now let's wander over to the uh, reporter section. Um, right, first, I'll give you a tour of my desk. Well, give me a tour of your desk. <laughs> Step into step into my office, <laughs> uh, and now I'll give you a tour of the neighborhood. Uh, uh, here's my colleague Doreen Carvajal, who uh, also Hi, Doreen. also writes on yeah. media. What do I do? Uh, well, we <laughs> just, just ask, ask a question. Don't just don't give the <laughs> mic. So, what are you responsible for, Doreen? Uh, well, I work with my colleague Tom, uh, covering media, um, any form of communications. Uh, Okay, so you have re oh, you're a reporter this or a you're a reporter. reporter. Okay, so you write too. Okay. I'm a real reporter. No, no, I was trying to uh, uh, understand because you, you said there are very few reporters here in the room, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so how do I'm you how do you decide what's important or not? Well, we actually Tom and I consult with each other since we sit so close. We consult with our editors as well. It's uh, basically it's what interests us, and then we bounce it off other people. So. Uh, today, I had a story about the concentration of ownership in the French media and the connections between me owners and uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. Uh, last week, I wrote about uh, video games and efforts to reach a mass audience with uh, games about um, beauty tips and things like that. So it's it's a very eclectic, wide range, but anything that communicates. But so how do you how do you decide? I mean, you wake up one day and you're like, okay, yesterday I covered this and Eureka. Well, we try to have. I was telling Thomas you get press release and then you do a story. <laughs> <It's all laughs> from Noik's point of view, it's all from press releases. Press releases. This is called a press release. Yeah, where are they? The press um, releases in the bin, maybe. If you look in the, you look in the <laughs> trash can, they're, they're right here. Okay. This is in the, the filing bin. cabinet for press releases. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, generally, um, we we read lots of newspapers. We read lots of websites. We track blogs. Um, we're constantly looking for trends. Um, and. Uh, Cutting edge sorts of trends. So we read your. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Free advertisement. <laughs> Which is now of number course. one again, I might add, after being. In the press two. release <laughs> bin. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> so thank you. You're Let's welcome. Continue. Thank you. Have a good, uh, have a good uh, story writing for okay. today. And oops. These are the mailboxes. That's what I use. Okay. So this is the feature, we're going into the features department of the editorial department. Uh, here's where we put together all the features pages. Um, this is the fashion editor's office. Here's the graphics. 
Patrick puts together all of our graphics here. Uh, and here's, Hello, a, here's, here's a graphic in the making right now. What, what is your uh, graphic on? These are graphics for the Pew Report. That about we'll be publishing, I believe, tomorrow morning. Which is about? Uh, it's a very large report that they've done about um, a whole host of subjects, including what people think of the U.S., what people think of China, what people think of. Can you give us the exclusive? Uh, what do people think of the U.S. and China? <laughs> it's the uh, U.S. It's all, it's as worse as it's ever been. The bad as ever been. The bad as it's a very bad opinion worse. of the U.S. Worse. Yes. Okay, you heard it here exclusively. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Perfect. This is where they design the actual pages. Oh, really? The pages look good. So we're getting close to the this final product here. <laughs> this is Olga's putting together a page right here. What is this page? Oh, this one is uh, properties. For Friday's oh, Friday. papers. So this is an exclusive you just had there. Exclusive view. <laughs> what I like about this department is they turn the, the computer sideways, the computer screen sideways, so that they're the actual shape of a, a, a page. Right. So you can show a newspaper page on them. Tell me about the... the your rules to write a story. My rules? Yeah. What should be in a good story? Uh, a good story has to be something that grabs people. Usually something very human is what's best. That's something that, that, that grabs a reader right away, very quickly at the top, that they can, that they can relate to. Uh, and the best story to write is something about a topic that somebody wouldn't normally be concerned about or interested in. It's a topic that... Uh, is very important but normally presented in a very boring way and if you find a new angle to present it it's very good for example I, human rights in Burma is a big issue but I once wrote a story there about a rock star in Burma you know if we tell people human rights are bad in Burma that's not very interesting but if we speak about how a rock star how difficult it is to be a rock star there how as rock music is music of rebellion how do you exist and have a rebellion in, under a dictatorship like Burma that brings it alive and maybe makes people more interested in, in the story and what's going on. How about the content? You the said content. You, you've said to me once or twice, like the first the beginning should be a summary of what's inside. Yeah, the, f the first couple lines really need to grab people. And then you have what you call a reverse pyramidal structure, which means that the, the very important stuff at the beginning and the less important stuff as you go down in the story, which sort of fleshes out what was at the top. That way, with, from the editor's point of view, the editors should be able to cut the story from the bottom. So that they, they, the, the bottom, maybe it has one paragraph that's necessary to keep, but the rest can just be chopped back. And the, the trick is really being able to write very quickly. Sometimes we'll have, you know, the other day I was contacted at, at 5.30 and told that we need a story right now. I had to write that story in an hour and a half. That's what for report, tea report in the night? Report and write that story from 5.30. Oh, okay. Which can be very difficult because at that point government offices are closed. Uh, it's difficult to contact people, nobody's available. So you just search from the internet? or You do everything. You search on the internet, you use tricks, like you call an office if it's late at night, and you see what the number is of the person you're trying to call. If that person doesn't answer their phone, you add one digit to the number. So if it's 25501, you, type, you, you dial 25502, 25503, 25504, until somebody picks up the phone and you hope that somebody's in that office. So these are all sort of the, the, the tricks you learn. And also one thing to do is turn up at, at the office itself. That's always the best thing is personal contact, being able mm. to reach someone and talk to them in person. And this is one of my favorite things in the newsroom, which is these uh, historic newspapers. These are famous moments in history, famous page one. This is the assassination of Kennedy. This is the uh, World Trade Center with my byline on it. <laughs> Uh, oh, right. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was in Hong Kong when that happened. Uh, and uh, this is Man on the Moon. Okay. This is the Gulf War, the end of the Soviet Union. And these are all dream moments to be working for a newspaper, of course, when you are at an event that's happening. But so how do you explain this willingness to uh, get the news to the people? I mean, how do you, did, did you lay down on a psychological uh, bed and... Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, thought and wondered why you had to report like this? Oh, because you... Uh, okay. I'm, I'm a reporter. Oh, you, you're just doing it for your... This is memoir? just for a blog. <laughs> oh, for your blog? Yeah. It's for Loic's blog. A video tour of the Herald Tribune. <laughs> <laughs>